Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play The Four Heroes of Light. Since last time, I saved on the north side of Liberté because, well, I want to be able to show off something that happens there at night. Okay, we're back, and I was just walking around outside until it became nighttime there. Finished off a level for Jesqua there. Oh, hmm. Remember that for later, viewers. But anyway, I just wanted to show a couple things off on the south side of Liberté. There's the whirlpool that a couple people were talking about. I don't want to know where I am. Get out of there. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, normally you can't go to the north side of Liberté at night. But if you saved up there, then use a dragon wing to warp back there. What happened to the music? But anyway, yeah, you can't walk out. You can't even go into the whirlpool area there. And what's going on with the music here? Oh, um, well, I'll get there sooner or later. But yeah, this is the developer's room of the game. They hit it here like that. I didn't catch that the first time I played the game. I just assumed a dragon wing wouldn't work at that part of the village or something at night. Ah, okay. Yeah, most of the animals you can't talk to around here, but that one you can. There's nothing really special here at night, just, you know, it's the developer's room. There's no items or anything practical you can get here. Oh, uh, yeah, they seem to kind of go for a storybook art style with the game. Maybe a little chibi, but... Well, I don't really know much about that sort of thing. Oh? What do you mean? The the kid in the house? Or in real life? I don't know. Well, okay. I, I won't ask any more questions. I'll just take everything in the game at face value, then. Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, it was pretty much the same stuff as uh, Final Fantasy IV DS, wouldn't it be? I mean, it's pretty much the same engine, but yeah, there's a few crowns that we don't get through the storyline there, and I will be collecting them all, eventually. Now, I can't get the musician crown right now, so there's nothing I can do about that. Oh, well, good for you! What's with that shadow in the water there? Seriously, I have no idea what that shadow is there for. There's nothing to indicate a shadow, but... Anyway, what he's talking about there is element stacking. Where, like right now, we have the ice shields equipped. And if we had another piece of equipment or an ability that could further reduce ice elemental damage then it would nullify it altogether. And you could do that on offense, too. You can stack like gauntlets with some abilities that increase your elemental damage too there. It kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy VIII, how you could make your attack more elemental or your defense more elemental. But anyway, yeah, in order to get out of there, you got to rest up on the left bed there. Or, well, I suppose you could have rested at the inn there too, but there's no point. The house is free. For some reason, you can't do that on the right bed. But anyway, if... Or before going out, there's a couple things I want to pick up. Get another dragon wing there to get out of there. And let's see. I also want to get the inherited ring for air because that'll be pretty useful to boost her HP later on. I don't think we need it right now, but towards the end, we'll need a little more HP for her. So, let's head on over to the pirate's hideout and see if we can rescue those villagers that got kidnapped by them. Holy cow. But anyway, okay, here we got a new enemy. Slimes. And, whoa, those were really bad shots of fire there. Usually I can one-shot them or come pretty close to doing so, but yeah, the damage variance for magic is pretty high there. Ha ha! But yeah, with the slimes, if 
you leave them around long enough, they can merge together, and it'll just combine their stats, I think. Something like that. So, they'll take a little longer to kill that way. I don't think you get more experience for that. I could be wrong, but... Anyway, if you recall, talking to the pirates earlier, their motto is freedom. Boom. You can get past the guy and move along, then. And by the way, as black mages here, you might have noticed in that random battle there, uh, all black magic costs... Well, not all black magic, but... The black magic that we have now is 1 AP. So we can basically just cast black magic like there's no tomorrow at this point. Oh, good for you. But anyway, oh wow, I didn't expect this guy to show up here. He's pretty rare, but well, you can find him sometimes. And let's see, these guys, they don't have an elemental weakness. So yeah, just go nuts with Quake. That'll be a little more powerful than fire there. Quake just has a little more base power there, but you can't use it against flying enemies like blood bats or anything like that. But anyway, yeah, at this point in the game, we're starting to accumulate Topaz, which is the third gem type in the game. So we're going to be picking up a whole bunch of them, yeah, and they'll be very useful for us. Eh, a little more money. Might as well steal some of that pirate booty. Gotta answer the call. Especially air. Apparently she really has a thing for treasure hunting. So, okay, whatever works for you. Gotta rebuild the kingdom somehow. Or the treasury, anyway. Ah, nuts. But yeah, the left side, well, yeah, just had the treasure. This side will eventually lead to the end if I stop running, running into random battles. But anyway, the Lamia here... Well, if I didn't one-shot her, she could have potentially confused me, which is why I have the confusion capes equipped on everyone. But, yeah, she's pr if it was just her, yeah, pretty easy to get through all that. But anyway, how do you know that? I, I answered the password. But anyway, okay, yeah, we got... Now, this lizard man here is a little tougher than the ones you can randomly meet up with here or before. But they're still weak to earth, so just use Quake on him. And, hey, we got a new gem there. That's the fourth gem type in the game. So, we want to get as many of those as possible. Let's see. Now, we got a new staff for air there. I don't know why they called it stave. I thought... You know, you have staves, yeah, you use a V there, but you don't just cut off the S and call stave a singular staff. It's staff, not stave. I don't know why they did that with a bunch of the staves in this game. Whatever. But anyway, okay, take care of that other guy there, and... Well, another treasure that I'll never use, but, well, it's there. The thing is, is that spears deal more damage to flying enemies, but flying enemies are strong against earth, so that doesn't help. But anyway, yeah, at this point, I want to give the inherited, or equip the inherited ring on air, restore HP with a potion, and I want to make Jusqua into a white mage with the white robe to boost his spirit stat, and let's just equip what spells we got, and the in innate ability of the white mage health giver which yeah you use that one round then in future rounds your cure spell can hit everyone yeah it's not like most final fantasy games where you could just target multiple enemies with a spell just by clicking or something oh nuts well then who are you for boss time against the Trollog. Well, that's his name anyway, but let's see. This guy does not have an elemental weakness, but in the first round, since we both start psyched up there, I want to go Twin Quake against them. Then after that, if I didn't take too much damage, I usually like to have Jusqua use Health Giver, so that way I can heal both of us. I mean, usually I will want to cast Cure if someone 
has fallen below 30 HP, because this guy does have some more powerful attacks. But as long as we're above 30 HP on both my party members, I think it's safe to go with a health giver there. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. If he just keeps on beating down the same character, then, well, okay, I just use Cure and the... Uh, what is it? The multi-targeting effect doesn't really do anything for me. But anyway, you saw there, he used Berserk on himself, and when he does that, what I want to do is press X and then have everyone boost there to get their de or well, to boost their physical defense there. Okay, we're good, we're good. So you want to do that boost for four rounds. Now, once he's starting his fourth attack, press the X button again to release the auto battle. So that way, by the time your next turn comes up, you can enter in your commands manually. And that's usually when I want Air and Jesqua to both cast Cure if I don't have Health Giver up, which usually I won't. Now, sometimes, even when he doesn't have Berserk up, I still want to have both of them use Cure if he gets like a really powerful World Legend there, like that. So yeah, we're both going to need to pitch in there since I don't have a Health Giver up. Sometimes I can get it, other times not so much. And yeah, Berserk lasts four turns. So basically, yeah, the purpose of using the boost or defend command there is just to reduce the possible damage that he can deal with Berserk because, yeah, he deals a ton of damage. And even with all this, some, it can still be really tough to survive this sometimes. Sometimes he'll just go World Bludgeon and then before I can heal, World Bludgeon again and we're dead. And there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, they probably expected you to do some level grinding at this point. Probably level 10 would be pretty good. But I have patience problems, so I'd rather just try to, you know, if you boost when you need to, and you keep an eye on things, and you heal up and everything, you should be fine to get through this battle. It's pretty rare when he can get a world bludgeon in before I have a chance to heal anyone or whoever needs it the most. But if that does happen, well, then you die, I guess. But anyway, yeah, we're doing pretty good there. Yeah, sometimes that world bludgeon can deal upwards of 25 damage or so. I've seen it deal as much as 28, but that's pretty rare without Berserk. Oh, and by the way, Berserk, uh, just like most other Final Fantasy games, in this one, it just boosts your attack power, or your physical attack power, that is. It does not send you uh, in, like, a Berserk status where you can't even control your character at all. No, you can control characters who are Berserk. It's more like Final Fantasy 2 or 3 Berserk than 4 or 5. Ow! Man, I'm getting a little light on my AP there for air. But anyway, yeah, I almost forgot that I used Health Giver there. Wow. He's kicking my ass with that thing. Yeah, Trollud has at most 400 HP, so this fight takes a while at this point in the game. One thing that is uh, another example of how this game is really a lot like Dragon Quest also is that the enemies, I don't know if it applies to bosses, I would think so, but I know random enemies don't always have the maximum amount of HP that they could potentially have. So sometimes you'll just do everything right, but they'll have their maximum potential amount of HP, and you'll just have to, well, keep on trying. Well, here I'm getting a little lucky he hasn't used Berserk in a while. 
I haven't gotten both my characters psyched up at the same time since the start of the fight, I think. So... Yeah, I can't really do a whole lot with Jusqua there on the offense. And I would not have Jusqua cast Quake without being psyched up because... Oh, I screwed up there. Whoops. But yeah, his damage is pitiful without being psyched up. But anyway, yeah, I meant to cast Cure, but I screwed up there. Whoops. I used Health Giver when I already had the status there. So, no, you can't just build up stacks of Health Giver. It doesn't work that way. Oh, and by the way, some people were talking about Magic Mojo. Right, I was, what I was saying, it's not really good. It's not really good right now. Because all my spells cost 1 AP, and Magic Mojo costs 1 AP to double that damage. So, there is really not much of a point in doing that right now. Stronger spells, that might be more useful with that. But did we make it in time to rescue the captured villagers? Find out next time on Let's Play The Four Heroes of Light. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.